Good morning, folks. We're going to hit Comet Atlas today because apparently covering it twice already wasn't enough. We've got bombshell science and cool things to see, so let's get started at spaceweathernews.com. And we find the last day on our star with the northern active region approaching the limb, the southern coronal hole turning through center longitudes, and brightness incoming at the 8 o'clock position. This will be the next area we watch for development, but perhaps more so those large looping arches behind the bright spot already visible in the photosphere. Solar wind here, dropping out. It was a brief and moderate to weak coronal hole stream, did reach 500 kilometers per second but couldn't hold on, and geomagnetic conditions are quieting back down this morning. Well folks, right around the time we spoke yesterday, a strong storm system tore through Ohio. This is the lightning mapper on GO-16. The system dropped at least one tornado in its early morning fury, and sunrise revealed the damage. While the storm did track on from Ohio and more eventually formed midday and into the evening, and which are still charging through night right now, they were still less severe for the most part. Some reports are still coming in, but tonight the focus on severe weather will be at the far end of its tail. Its convergence and wind control separates in Texas and will drive severe storms there and into Louisiana, while the low itself pounds the northeast with snow. A quick look at the March U.S. climate report here, and it was a bit of a flipped script. The normally hot west took a dive in temperature, and of course April hasn't started any better for them, with most of the rest of the country slightly above average. Top rumble of the last day was a deep blood echo in the southwest Pacific, and then on the exact same latitude we had a deep low velocity zone blood echo strike Peru. Both at very interesting depths and with Argentina already continuing the blood echoes in South America this morning. Up next we go to Comet Atlas, and sorry for those expecting fireworks, the show is falling apart. Fragmentation is observed, and it's not the exciting sideways fracture, it is a linear stringing out of the comet that will steal its potential brightness and send all the material along the same path it's currently on. Here are some key facts. Its coma is big, but not that big. Almost every sun-diving comet gets a Jupiter-sized coma, and it's not going to hit or come close to anything in the solar system, especially because it spends about six hours on the orbital ecliptic plane of the planets, and then it's gone to the south. Its debris will go with it or into the sun, and the ion tail blasted away by the solar wind will hit Earth's ecliptic weeks before Earth passes that position in its orbit. The solar wind will carry it way out and away within just two or three days. So unless Atlas literally explodes, there is no show. But don't worry, the net will freak out like it has with previous comets, most of which were cooler than this one. And don't forget, we do expect to get about two to five of these eccentric intruders every single decade. Well, folks, in a piece that rivals the importance of Chandra's no axion, failed theory of everything report about a week or two ago, we are now hearing a call from top groups around the world. Something has to change. And what did it was they're beginning to realize this expanding universe picture is not what they thought it was. While still clinging to those initial conditions, they now state definitively that the modern day expansion is not uniform. This would be where the dipole repeller and great attractor come in, by the way. But first, we've got two very real and awesome bits of science we can confirm as real. So this was the lost light of Hubble, if you'll recall. The gray stuff is the new material they couldn't see before, surrounding the galaxies in halos exactly where the dark matter halos were supposed to reside. Well, today, we can confidently expand that influence. The ionization bubble of the galaxies are enormous and much larger than anticipated, even for someone who thinks cosmologically like I do. They say eventually, all bubbles will merge to form a fully ionized universe. Now, how do you top that description, right? Well, by their discovery of electric currents in outer space. And they're connecting giant radio lobes around galaxy clusters, like a string, bridge, highway, a wire in a circuit. And that's an apt description, because they claim the emission of those strings is due to high-energy electrons spiraling in a magnetic field. Well, no doubt about that. But to get a spiraling magnetic field, a tornado vortex around a central axis, Running down that axis as a matter of elementary physics is an electric current, not to mention the electrons flowing around the spiral in the vortex are a current as well. There are electric currents connecting the heavens, and the most important viewing bands for cosmology, I think just became the thousand or so megahertz bands you'd get from scopes like Meerkat in South Africa. Website members, one more thing. 
that whole space weather and pandemic story going around the net. So sorry, we give a little jabbing debunkery if you care to check it out. The short version is, if I was a self-interested con artist, yeah, I'd take that gold for my space weather channel and run, but it's just not so, and that's not how we do things here. Your awareness is much more important than more clicks and views. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got your wind map forecast and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.